Welcome, friends. We're on chapter seven in um, The Course in Miracles, section five, Healing and the Changelessness of Mind. In, in the text, it's on page 119. The body is nothing more than a framework for developing abilities which is quite apart from what they are used for. That is a decision. The effects of the ego's decision in this matter are so apparent that they need no elaboration. But the Holy Spirit's decision to use the body only for communication has such a direct connection with healing that it does need clarification. The unhealed healer obviously does not understand his own vocation. Only minds communicate. Since the ego cannot obliterate the impulse to communicate because it is also the impulse to create, it can only teach you that the body can both communicate and create, and therefore does not need the mind. The ego thus tries to teach you that the body can act like the mind and is therefore self-sufficient. Yet we have learned that behavior is not the level for either teaching or learning, since you can act in accordance with what you do not believe. To do this, however, will weaken you as a teacher and a learner because, as has been repeatedly emphasized, you teach what you do believe. An inconsistent lesson will be poorly taught and poorly learned. If you teach both sickness and healing, you are both a poor teacher and a poor learner. Are there any questions up to this point? Okay, then paragraph three. Healing is the one ability everyone can develop and must develop if he is to be healed. Healing is the Holy Spirit's form of communication in this world and the only one he accepts. He recognizes no other because he does not accept the ego's confusion of mind and body. Minds can communicate, but they cannot hurt. The body in the service of the ego can hurt other bodies, but this cannot occur unless the body has already been confused with the mind. The situation too can be used either for healing or for magic. But you must remember that magic always involves the belief that healing is harmful. This belief is its totally insane premise, and so it proceeds accordingly. Now, a, a lot of the understanding of, of this lesson has been explained in earlier chapters. So, um, Let's just go over a few points. The, the mind is basically operating with the body. The spirit is operating with the mind. The ego is operating in duality. The spirit is operating in oneness. Healing is remembering your oneness with the Father with spirit. 
what from ego's point of view, the word healing is used for like, okay, you take some medicine and then you're healed. And the course is using that kind of healing and giving it the term magic because it doesn't work if you don't believe that it's gonna work. So um, that's a, a, a little bit of, of an understanding of what they're talking about. Any questions? David? Uh, it got me thinking about food and how food can heal your body. How, are they saying that you, you have to be in spirit in order to food to heal your body? You know, that's one of, food is one of God's creations. Um. Well, food exists in the ego world. It doesn't exist in the spiritual world. Uh, light is food in the spiritual world. Um, so remember the, the 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 definition of healing in the course is the healing of the mind. And that is defined as remembering that you are perfect, innocent spirit. Healing, according to the Course, is a spiritual understanding of remembering that you are the child of God, remembering who you truly are. So food and medicine, all of that in terms of bodily healing is all happening in the ego world. Now, bodily healing can occur spiritually when we remember that who we truly are, that we are truly spirit, then that does have its effect on the body also. And that is how uh, what are called miracles, of, for example, like, like Jesus did, healing the lame, healing the blind. And he would say, it is your faith that has healed you. In other words, it is your belief that that you have come to that that you're a spiritual being, being that wound up healing your body in the ego world instead of using ego healing to heal your body. So there there is that that crossover as a possibility. But lots of people experience true healing when they cross over from ego to a spirit, they just give up the body. They're not even concerned about healing the body anymore. They, they just give up the body and return to being their, um, their spiritual selves, which spiritual beings don't need a, a physical body. I hope that kind of explained it. Suzanne? I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it so convoluted, this writing? I mean, why does it make it so difficult? You know, it goes this way, it goes that way, it goes the other way, it goes around and about. You know, it's pretty clear. I mean, the message is a, it's a simple one, basically, isn't it? Well, it may be for some people. Other people, 
uh, especially, you know, the, the, the book is being written for people who are in the ego world of understanding. And so they, they're attempting to explain things using ego language that will eventually make sense to the person's mind and they're doing it as universally as possible. So in other words, they do say the same thing over and over and over again, using different words so that, you know, you may not have gotten it, the message in chapter two, but now by chapter seven, you're hearing it again and you're starting to get the message. And by chapter 11, you're pretty well understanding the message. And so they, you know, spirit realizes that it takes time and that everybody has different uh, uh, levels of comprehension. So they, that's why it may sound convoluted uh, to you. It just goes, it, yeah, because it goes back and forth. I mean, like, like it's very clear that you must believe in order to be a healer. You must believe and have faith. Right. It's the same. You must have faith. Not sort of faith, but faith, right? I mean, it's pretty clear. Um, you know, and love is incapable of any exceptions. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I just, it, it, I, I end up losing a little patience with this because it, to me, it seems very clear, the message. And the, the, I like this, the fearful healer is a contradiction in terms <laughs> It is therefore constant, only a conflicted where, mind. Where, where are you? Oh, sorry. Up at the top of page 121. Um, top? What, what's... I went ahead a little bit. Okay. You went ahead. Okay, well. Well, because, yeah. I can only ask that you be patient okay. and that you, that you listen. And if you're finding it convoluting, just listen, don't, don't fight with it and take, take what you get right. and just leave the rest to sit there. Okay. Okay. So now I think we're back to, um, I think we're on paragraph four. Healing only strengthens. Magic always tries to weaken. Healing perceives nothing in the healer that everyone else does not share with him. Magic always sees something special in the healer, which he believes he can offer as a gift to someone who does not have it. He may believe that the gift comes from God to him, but it is quite evident that he does not understand God if he thinks he has something that others lack. Well, let's, let's try to reword this. Healing only strengthens. Well, that's spirit. Spirit only strengthens. Magic always tries to weaken, that's ego. Ego always tries to weaken. Healing spirit perceives nothing in the healer, that's you. Spirit perceives nothing in you that everyone else does not share with you. Spirit sees us all as equal because spirit sees us all as one. Magic, ego, always sees something special in the healer, in you, which ego believes he can offer as a gift to someone who does not have it because ego is not operating out of oneness. Ego is operating out of divisiveness. 
ego seeing each person as an individual unconnected to the other person. So ego has levels, higher and lower. It doesn't see everyone as equal like spirit does. So sentence five, he may believe the, the gifts, uh, the ego person may believe the gifts come from God to him, but it's quite evident that that person doesn't understand God if he thinks he has something that others lack. So you may believe that the gifts come from God to you, but it's evident that you don't understand God if you think you have something that others lack. Because if you understood God, you would know that we're all equal. There's only one of us and that nobody lacks anything. God's given all to all. And it is in those understandings that happen within our mind that lead to healing. Paragraph five, the Holy Spirit does not work by chance. And healing that is of him always works. Unless the healer always heals by him, the results may vary. Yet healing itself is consistent, since only consistency is conflict-free, and only the conflict-free are whole. By accepting exceptions and acknowledging that he can sometimes heal, and sometimes not, the healer is obviously accepting inconsistency. He is therefore in conflict and is teaching conflict. Can anything of God not be for all and for always? Love is incapable of any exceptions. Only if there is fear, does the idea of exceptions seem to be meaningful? Exceptions are fearful because they are made by fear. The fearful healer is a contradiction in terms and is therefore a concept that only a conflicted mind could possibly perceive as meaningful. So they talk, they're, they're talking about the healer, but the healer is you and me, we, we are the healer. So to go back over that, the Holy Spirit does not work by chance. Healing by the Holy Spirit always works. And unless we always heal through spirit, the results will vary. Sentence three, yet healing itself is consistent. He true healing, spiritual healing is consistent because only spiritual healing is conflict free. And only the conflict free are whole. And being whole is the definition of being healed. Sentence four by accepting exceptions and acknowledging that he, you, can sometimes heal and sometimes not, the healer, you or we are obviously accepting inconsistency. 
if that's how we think. So if that's the case, then, then we, we would be in conflict and we'd be teaching conflict. We'd be an ego and teaching ego. Can anything of God not be for all, for always? The answer is no. Everything from God can only be for all and always. Love is incapable of any exceptions. True love, the love of God, the love of spirit, is incapable of any exceptions. It's not like the ego who has special relationships. Oh, I love you. You're my dear son or daughter. You're my dear, I love you. But that guy over there, oh, he, he's, a, he's a, a no good for all. You know, well, there's no love for him. Well, spirit doesn't work that way. Only ego does. Love is true love. Spiritual love is incapable of any exceptions. Only if there is fear does the idea of exceptions seem to be meaningful. And that's what happens in ego. Lots of times in ego, we're unwilling to extend our love to this one or that one or this group or that group because underneath all of that is fear. And fear is directly from ego. There, there's no fear in spirit. So exceptions are fearful because they are made of fear. And the fearful healer is a contradiction in terms. You can't be a, a true spiritual healer who believes that love is incapable of any exceptions and yet still be in fear. And so that's just a concept of the conflicted mind and it can't possibly be perceived as meaningful. Questions, comments? Paragraph six, fear does not gladden, healing does. Fear always makes exceptions, healing never does. Fear produces dissociation because it includes separation. Healing always produces harmony because it proceeds from integration. It is predictable because it can be counted on. Everything that is of God can be counted on because everything of God is wholly real. Healing can be counted on because it is inspired by his voice and is in accord with his laws. Yet if healing is consistent, it cannot be inconsistently understood. Understanding means consistency because God means consistencies. Since that is his meaning, it is also yours. Your meaning cannot be out of accord with his because your whole meaning and your only meaning comes from his and is like his. God cannot be out of accord with himself and you cannot be out of accord with him. You cannot separate yourself from your creator who created you by sharing his being with you. So that, that is a very clear message.
time, any questions, comments? Paragraph seven. The unhealed healer. So that's, did you want to say something, Susan? I just said this is clear. The last yeah. paragraph was clear. Good. Very clear to me. Good. So paragraph seven, the unhealed healer. I'll, I'll just say right now, that's, we're all, we're all healers, but the unhealed healer is a healer who's still trapped in ego. So the unhealed healer wants gratitude from his brothers, but he is not grateful to them. That is because he thinks he is giving something to them and is not receiving something equally desirable in return. His teaching is limited because he is learning so little. His healing lesson is limited by his own ingratitude, which is a lesson in sickness. True learning is consistent and so vital in its power for change that a son of God can recognize his power in one instant and change the world in the next. This is because by changing his mind, he has changed the most powerful device that was ever given him for change. I'm gonna go over that again, sentence five. True learning is consistent and so vital in its power for change that a son of God can recognize his power in one instant and change the world in the next. This is because by changing his mind, he has changed the most powerful device that was ever given him for change. This is, this in no way contradicts the changelessness of mind as God created it. But you think that you have changed it as long as you learn through the ego. This places you in a position of needing to learn a lesson that seems contradictory. You must learn to change your mind about your mind. Only by this can you learn that it is changeless. You must learn to change your mind about your mind. So there's, there's a whole process involved here. And, and for some, it's very complicated. For others, it's, it's easier to understand and comprehend than for others. Um, a lot has to do with how much time a person has devoted to understanding these concepts and learning these concepts and putting these concepts into practice while living in the ego world. So some people are much better versed at it than others. But just remember that in God's mind, we're all equal, we're all one, we're all healed, and, and that's the mind that we have to change our mind about. We have to change our ego mind to accept our spiritual mind, in other words. Paragraph 
Paragraph eight, when you heal, that is exactly what you are healing. That is exactly what you are learning. You are recognizing the changeless mind in your brother by realizing that he could not have changed his mind. That is how you perceive the Holy Spirit in him. It is only the Holy Spirit in him that never changes his mind. He himself may think he can, or he would not perceive himself as sick. He therefore does not know what his self is. If you see only the changeless in him, you have not really changed him. By changing your mind about his for him, you help him undo the change his ego thinks it has made in him. So basically what that's saying is that when, whenever you look at anyone else in your mind, you have to be willing to see that other person and think about that other person as an equal to you, as a child of God, that you're one with them, that they are completely innocent and whole and forgiven. You have to be able to look at everyone you see and perceive them as being a spiritual being as you are yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And that's how you change the ego mind. David? Suzanne, either of you? I agree. Thank you. All right, then. We're on. Paragraph nine, as you can hear two voices, so you can see in two ways. One way shows you an image or an idol that you may worship out of fear, but will never love. The other shows you only truth, which you will love because you will understand it. Understanding is appreciation, because what you understand you can identify with. And by making it part of you, you have accepted it with love. That is how God himself created you, in understanding, in appreciation, and in love. The ego is totally unable to understand this because it does not understand what it makes, does not appreciate it, and does not love it. It incorporates to take away. It literally believes that every time it deprives someone of something, it has increased. I have spoken often of the increase of the kingdom by your creations, which can only be created as you are. The whole glory and perfect joy that is the kingdom lies in you to give. Do you not want to give it? Well, ego does not create out of love, but spirit does create out of love. And you 
being the son of, of the father, are capable of creating. And when you create out of love, then you're creating spiritually. But the ego doesn't understand this. The ego thinks that, that, um, that if it deprives someone of something, that it is increased. In other words, you have more than me, so I'm going to take from you so that I have more than you. That's, that's the ego thinking. Spirit says, I don't have to take anything from you because all of us have everything. I have as much as you have. Everyone has as much as everyone has. There's no reason to take anything from anybody. I'll, I'll just give. I'll just give of what I have because everybody in spirit gives what they have. That's how they create more. Remember in an earlier lesson, it said, if you want to create more, give what you've got away to create more. Give out of love. That's how the Father works. He gave of himself in order to create us. So, the end of that paragraph, the whole glory and perfect joy that is the kingdom lies in you to give. Do you not want to give it? Paragraph 10. You cannot forget the Father because I am with you and I cannot forget him. To forget me is to forget yourself and him who created you. Our brothers are forgetful. That is why they need your remembrance of me and of him who created me. Through this remembrance, you can change their minds about themselves as I can change yours. Your mind is so powerful a light that you can look into theirs and enlighten them as I can enlighten yours. I do not want to share my body in communion because this is to share nothing. What I try to share in illusion with the most holy children of a most holy father? Yet I do want to share my mind with you because we are of one mind and that mind is ours. See only this mind everywhere because only this is everywhere and in everything. It is everything because it encompasses all things within itself. Blessed are you who perceive only this, because you perceive only what is true. So understanding that it is Jesus who gave us this course, Every time he says, I, he's referring to himself, but unfortunately, there's too many people that think of Jesus as a person who died on the cross to save us from our sins. And that's not really the Jesus we're talking about here. So we can rephrase it. And I'm, I'm, and I'm going to. You, the child of God, cannot forget the Father because I, Spirit, Holy Spirit, am with you. And Spirit cannot forget God. To forget Spirit is to forget yourself. 
and God who created you. Our brothers in the ego are forgetful. That is why they need your remembrance of spirit and of God who created spirit. Through this remembrance, you can change your brothers' minds about themselves as spirit can change your mind. Your mind is so powerful a light that you can look into theirs and enlighten them as spirit can enlighten yours. Spirit does not want to share its body in communion, the ego body, because this is to share nothing. The ego body is an illusion. It doesn't even exist. Would spirit try to share an illusion with the most holy children of the most holy God? Yet spirit does want to share its spiritual mind with you because we are of one mind and that mind is capitalized. And that mind is ours. There's only one of us. There's only one mind. It is ours. See only this one mind everywhere. Because only this is everywhere and in everything. The oneness, again. It is everything because it encompasses all things within itself. Blessed are you who perceive only this. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Because then you will perceive only what is true. You will only perceive spirit. So we have to get ourselves into the oneness, into the mindset of the oneness, and leave the duality behind. Paragraph 11, come therefore unto me and learn the truth in you. The mind we share is shared by all our brothers. And as we see them truly, they will be healed. Let your mind shine with mine upon their minds. And by our gratitude to them, make them aware of the light in them. This light will shine back upon you and on the whole sonship because this is your proper gift to God. He will accept it and give it to the sonship because it is acceptable to him and therefore to his sons. This is true communion with the Holy Spirit who sees the altar of God in everyone. And by bringing it to your appreciation, he calls upon you to love God and his creation. You can appreciate the sonship only as one. This is part of the law of creation and therefore governs all thought. That's powerful. Yes, it is. Yeah. Hmm. We have come to the end of this section. David, if you want to unmute, if you have anything to share. It's very powerful. You know, we've been given our papers. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 trick, the trick to all of this, first of all, is to really have a deep understanding of what it's saying, 
And secondly, to put it in practice. The action, yes. Right, to actually do what it's teaching us to do. That's that's the real. Of course, to not do that is, is well, it's, yeah. The whole point is to strengthen all these beliefs and make them total and complete. And therefore ourselves total and complete. Yes. You know, I mean, that's the point of this. And the world fights this like crazy. Oh, yeah. Because the world is so steeped in ego. Yeah. And ego is all about fight, fight, fight. Might oh, is God. right. You know. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I know. This is very clear. This is very powerful. You know. And it, 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 it does hand, hand you a mandate, you know, basically, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. Yes. You know, and uh, we try, we try. But then again, I remember someone saying to me once, well, try to raise your hand. You either do or you don't, you know? <laughs> uh, so, it, it, it's a serious mandate and it's essential. And uh, that's why we're taking the course. Yes. Right? Right, David? Whatever you say, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think you're getting it. It only took about four paragraphs. <laughs> I got it. No, I got it. Yeah, I got it. I get it. But it's, the uh, thing about healing is so so critical. I mean, if you do healing work, you've got to believe in what you're doing. You must, or else it's useless. Uh, you know, you must 100% believe in what you're doing. Love, care, compassion, empathy. These are all healing things um, that we have to be conscious of and practice and um we have to love our brothers because they are ourselves, you know? They are them, we are, this is, John said earlier, I don't know if you were on, but you're saying about it's peace. To have peace in the world, we have to do all these things, show that we care, just like a mother loves her child. It's, uh, it's but we're not only loving your child, you're loving the whole world, you're loving everybody. You're loving the earth. This sounds like Quaker stuff. It, it, it is. It is Quaker stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can't pick and choose. Yeah. You don't pick and choose. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just, you are, as a child of God, you do, God, you do what God wants you to do. Okay. I mean, you got to be obedient, you know? Um, that's part of this obedience. But then when you're obedient, you're connected, completely connected when you're obedient, which is a real good thing. Um, anything else you want to say, John? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm content with leaving it here. Next uh, week, we'll pick up um, uh, section six from Vigilance to Peace. Mm. So I hope that you will all join me again. I can't believe that we're only on page 123. Yeah, for mm. next week, we are. Yeah. And there's so taking much. Taking it slow, time. we're taking it slow. Yeah. Wow. What is what is that song uh, mean? Uh, Gumbaya that people I don't know sang when I was in my twenties. It seems like it 
just came to my mind. Kumbaya. I, I, I don't know, but let's not get off on a tangent with that, please. No. <laughs> it's, it's time to end our session for tonight. Okay. So let's have if, some we could, if we could go into silence, please. <laughs>